it's hard to know what to add to a terrific uh, session from which I learned a lot. But it occurs to me from a management point of view that what's critical to humanistic management is what I would call humanistic hiring. It's very hard to change people. And if you're not hiring people into your organization who treat each other in the right way, who care about other people as human beings, who bring more than basic technical skills to the party, and if you don't promote people who show more than basic technical and performance competence, you're not going to have a humanistic organization. It starts at the beginning, and unless you get the hiring right, speeches, rewards, credos really won't make that much difference. I think there are at least two uh, important ingredients to developing a, an ethically healthy organization, or what I might call uh, a healthy organizational ethical culture. Uh, one is accountability. That every particular person in the company needs to understand that they are accountable for their actions, but also they're accountable in terms of making sure others are living up to the values of that organization. The second perhaps most important element in developing an ethical culture is what I would call critical reflection. There are group decisions that are made all the time within organizations, but unless that organization has those groups meet after the action has occurred and critically reflect upon what was accomplished, how it could have been done better, and to think it through from a reflective point of view, then I don't think that culture can be said to have an ethically um, uh, healthy culture. So what does it take to develop uh, an ethically healthy organization? Well, from my perspective, if we don't understand how the value and vulnerability of, uh, of each of us, which is in my vocabulary is all about understanding that we all have dignity, we all have this inherent um, God-given uh, birthright, uh, and that we're all valuable and we're all vulnerable at the same time. And in a workplace, this manifests itself so, so deeply in the sense that when people are together in an organization, they want to be seen, they want to be heard, they want to be recognized, and in essence, they want to be treated as if they are something of value and something of worth. And so recognizing that, um, I think, is probably fundamental. But there's another piece in it that is really important uh, from my perspective, which is that if the leadership of, the, of an organization is not completely on board and completely um, signed on to the importance of honoring dignity inside, not only just inside uh, the company, but also honoring dignity of their customers, honoring dignity of everyone in the, in the supply chain. I think the, the chances of the organization developing a dignity culture are pretty slim. So the leadership has to be on board. I've seen it time and time again. Uh, I've seen both. I've seen where the organization wants a, to create a culture of dignity, where everybody's treated well, but the leadership doesn't, and that's where the failures happen. But I've seen um, many examples of when the leadership says, you know what, this is really our high priority. We want everyone here in this company to feel valued, to feel cared for, and to feel like they're making a, a significant contribution to the well-being of the company and to the profitability of the company. Well, so what is the most or one thing that one can do to create a more healthy ethical organization from a humanistic perspective? I would say it's really very simple to simply engage the people that you work with, that you uh, sell to, that you supply from, uh, really your stakeholders, um, in some meaningful way, in a discourse where you listen and where they feel empowered. That's when they feel their dignity is in some way inherently protected. That's when trust gets built. 
And that's when you typically get information about what is the right thing to do. So you build healthier organizations simply through talking with people and listening to them in a mindful way without preconceived notions about how they can be useful to you, but also how you as an organization or a manager can be useful to them in a mutual giving and taking uh, manner. So I think there are lots of things that go into creating an ethically healthy organization. And there are clearly certain things that you can't have in place to create an ethically organization, a healthy organization. So for example, if the leadership is not ethically grounded, uh, that's certainly a problem. Um, if people don't have a clear sense of the purpose of the organization, it's clearly a problem. But I think that probably the most important thing to keep in mind is to ensure that the people in the organization feel that their contributions are valued, that they're being listened to, that they're being recognized for their work. And the reason I say that is that if people don't feel recognized, if they don't feel that they're being listened to, if they don't feel, feel that their work is being valued, uh, then it becomes very difficult uh, to have a sense that what the organization doing is somehow worthwhile and worth pursuing and supporting. And when that feeling is lost, then I think that opens up the possibility for a lots of unhealthy and unethical behaviors in the context of the organization. So what's the most important key to developing ethically healthy organizations? Um, I think there's at least two components. Uh, first, there has to be a, a very clear statement by the organization what its purposes and values are. I think uh, it's a very soft thing to consider, but I think it's incredibly important for getting into everyone's mind around the organization. Uh, you know, what are our standards? What are our objectives? Um, you know, what are the things I can be held accountable to? What are the things I can hold other people accountable to? And a statement, it could be that simple, a statement of values um, gets everyone on the same page, I think creates a common framework. Uh, then the second question I think is, is a much more difficult question, which is how do you actually credibly uh, enforce, how do you credibly uh, disseminate and, and, and credibly organize an organization to live up to these values? Uh, some of this can be very mundane and, and as simple as how do we account for things? How do we allow people to cooperate? Uh, you know, how do we coordinate to actions? Um, second, you know, if people don't live up, what's the procedures for trying to remedy that? Uh, this can be informal, uh, but as long as there are, there are some structures where people understand not only these are our values and these are what we're about, um, but I actually think the organization can help us realize those. And when we deviate, there's someone I can talk to. Uh, I can blow the whistle, or I can talk to someone informally, or I can, uh, you know, have some response, it's going to go up the chain and things are actually going to change at the end of the day. Um, so I think those two components, a, a clear sense of mission in an organization and the actual structures that organizationally allow that mission to be implemented. Well, if the question is how to get a better organization, an ethically healthy organization, I guess that as a professor of management, it's a matter of being a good manager if that's your responsibility. So when teaching in my classes of management, I would say, you can be a manager out of fear, so making people feel afraid of you being a manager, or you just can have people around that they really realize that you care about them. So a good manager is someone who cares about people, cares about people. And it's not a kind of nice thing, it's just that you really love your work as a manager, and people will realize that you love them. And it sounds like this is management. Yes, you love them in the sense that you want them to flourish as human beings when, when you are in that company, that specific company. So you, as manager, will take the best you can from everyone to be shared, to offer to society. So if you're working in my company, I want you to be the best employee for the best good of society. The contribution to common good in that sense will be possible if people really realize in your company that you're teaching them, helping them, to give, to be of value for society.